Thank you so much. Um, good evening, colleagues. Um, it's an honor to be here today to give this lecture. Um, I haven't, of course, met um, Dr. Stanley Plotkin, um, but reading through his bio um, bio um, biography, as I mentioned, we could see is a good example for every one of us coming after him um, regarding public health and um, trying to ensure that we make impact while we're working here. I think um, what I've seen to work is the passion that we put into the work we do. And that leads me to um, my talk today. It's a story. <laughs> and um, just um, to talk about the how I got into monkeypox work, what um, I've learned so far, where we are, the challenges and um, um, the lessons we are learning. We're still learning. There's still a lot to do. So I hope you learn a little um, from what I'm going to share with you today. Yeah, so we said that already. So um, nice to, 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 to see the, uh, that he was a great advocate for the protection um, of humans, particularly children from preventable infectious disease. Diseases, rather. So we'll talk about monkeypox, the origin, um, the, the etiologies. Then we'll talk about um, smallpox. There's no way you talk about um, monkeypox that you won't um, have to refer to, 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 small, um, to smallpox. The interventions to the outbreaks, um, vaccines. I know there's a vaccinology course. Uh, I'm not a vaccinology. I'm just an epidemiologist. So <laughs> you might not want to take me too much into the vac vaccinology aspect of it, but we're going to talk about it because it's quite important and um, pivotal to the um, to the response to monkeypox outbreak that we call it um, currently dealing with. The challenges with learning lessons, recommendations, of course, acknowledgements. So, what is monkeypox? Um, in 2017, um, specifically, um, you know, 28th of September, I was called to investigate um, a suspected case of um, monkeypox in Nigeria. That was the first time I'll be reading <laughs> about monkeypox. And um, I took up the challenge to travel to where... Um, the suspected case was, and then we started the investigation and a lot of story um, coming after that. So what is um, MPOX? It used to be um, monkeypox until this current outbreak, and then we have to do a change, um, a renaming, and I will get to mention um, that um, um, somewhere in the lecture. Um, so MPOX is an infectious um, rash illness caused by monkeypox virus. Mind the name, um, Mpox is a disease, but the virus, the name for the virus hasn't changed. So the virus is still monkeypox um, virus. And um, it's an autopox virus. Um, there are quite a number of other autopox viruses that we know. And the, perhaps the most popular is smallpox. And the very great um, achievement of public health Globally till today, having been eradicated, but we know that even though it's been eradicated, a lot of work um, is still ongoing regarding smallpox because we have um, issues maybe of filth, uh, um, um, threats, and all that. So we still want to be ahead of the virus, even though it's been um, eradicated. Vaccinium virus, where we got the uh, smallpox vaccine from, cowpox, buffalo, a lot of them quite a number. And the recent um, um, studies is showing that a lot, so many other autopox viruses that, has never, that we never knew are, are being discovered um, as we work more in the, in the field. So it's very similar clinically, I mean, clinical presentation uh, to smallpox. Um, first the, um, discovery was in 1958, and that was in Denmark. Not in Africa, you know. <laughs> so this, this first discovery was not in Africa. In, 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 it was discovered in um, animal care for research in Denmark. But the first human case was discovered in um, 
human, a nine-month-old child in 1970 in the um, DRC, the um, Democratic Republic um, of Congo. And that was about just two years after the area where this case was um, discovered um, was uh, was conf um, had smallpox eradication, you know. So the, the search and to wondering what exactly this is um, led to the um, discovery of monkeypox um, in human. And over time, monkeypox um, has, has come to, 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 to take the place of smallpox in a way, becoming the most important autopox virus um, of public health um, concern. Um, a little about the epidemiology of the disease. If you see the map there, um, it's showing what we used to know um, about the epidemiological, um, the ecological niche of, um, of, of monkeypox. And those are areas where it's expected to find um, mon uh, monkeypox virus in, cel in circulation. So it's a tropical disease as it was known, and considered them to be, to affect mostly people living in forested remote areas um, in Central and, um, and West Africa. It's known to be uh, um, endemic in some African countries, not all African um, countries, actually. Maybe my colleague in from uh, Uganda here might want to say what, what's happening with um, um, monkeypox in their in the in their country, but mostly DRC, um, Central African uh, region, um, Central African region are the places where uh, um, mpox was has been reported over the last fifty uh, over fifty years. Um, that's since nineteen uh, nineteen seventy, and they continue to report the um, cases till um, now. Now, um, we have two clips of uh, monkeypox, the West Africa, former, formerly known as the Cent uh, Congo Basin or Central African clade, which has now been renamed as the um, clade one. And we have one that is um, seen commonly in the, in the West African um, region and it's now called the um, clade two. And that is the clade responsible for the current um, global outbreak. Now, um, sequence, um, genetic sequences of, um, in recent times, I've also been able to show to, um, um, show that we have so, um, sublineage of the clade two. We have A and B. Um, all these are important in the epidemiology of the current, um, outbreak. Transmission. We said, um, it's zoonotic disease. Um, so we expect to have, um, to, we expect animal to human transmission. This is what is uh, known about monkeypox. And you know, when you say it's a, a zoonotic disease, um, you will have expected, since we have the smallpox um, vaccine, which is um, protective uh, um, against monkeypox as well, um, you will have expected perhaps is it possible to eradicate, but this won't be possible since we say, okay, this is a zoonotic disease. But the secondary human to human um, transmission of it um, is what we're currently um, dealing with. So in West Africa, there have been zoonot um, reports of zoonotic um, transmission and then secondary human to human transmission. Now, the animal reservoir are poorly understood. Till date, um, I think just twice has the virus be identified in any animal, just twice. But there's this belief that the um, virus is circulating in rodents, small mammals, in endemic uh, regions. So diagnostic um, is a major challenge as well. Now, human-to-human -human, um, transmission can occur through contacts, um, direct contact or indirect contact with, um, through um, contact with fomites, fomites maybe um, linear and things that have been contaminated. But we have um, a lot of evidence regarding the face-to-face, um, -face, skin to skin, um, mouth to mouth, any form of um, contact, direct contact between an infectious person and um, other um, 
uninfectious person will lead to infection. And that is what um, we're currently um, experiencing. So um, sexual behaviors um, and related events, you know, play a major role in, in the um, ongoing, um, the, the um, current um, ongoing global spread of monkeypox. Now, what are, who are the um, groups that are at high risk of human to human um, transmission? So in 2020, 2022, we um, saw that there was um, the reported case um, in the first in the UK and then later there was a spread. And that was because the, this spread occurred among a particular community which facilitated and uh, enhanced the um, rapid spread of monkeypox. So sex, um, sex workers and um, persons with um, multiple sexual partners are all at risk. As a result, I think it stands to reason as a result of the uh, level of contact that um, is experienced um, between those people. So they are at high risk of um, getting infected with um, monkeypox. Now, back to smallpox. Uh, and the relationship with uh, mpox. So I mentioned earlier they belong to the same family. Um, and we also know that after the um, eradication of smallpox, uh, mpox is taking the place, um, form of taking the, 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 the niche um, of, 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 um, of smallpox. Since the declaration, uh, um, eradication, I mean, of smallpox in 1980, we also know that the, the vaccination also stopped. So over time, we've had the generations and population, the growing population of people who are not immunized against smallpox and are susceptible to, um, to mon monkeypox. So, um, but we know that even after the eradication, um, the research into smallpox vaccine did the end because this is quite significant um, regarding mpox vaccines. So in the US, um, um, US CDC and, and, and the center in the F Russia Federation continue to, res um, to research into therapeutics and vaccines into, um, small, um, into um, smallpox, which is also very uh, um, coming in handy when it comes to response to mpox as well. Now, so how did it get here? Uh, the mpox we know um, spread by contact either direct or indirect um, contact between um, either animal and uh, infected animal and human or between um, human. So uh, subsequent um, um, sporadic cases in, in, in um, the African region, which that I mean, the primary zoonotic transmission, and then we have um, subsequent human to human um, transmission. So, mpox was believed um, to be limited to rural dwellers. So, since 1970, that this transmission um, has been ongoing, for instance, in DRC, where thousands of cases suspected, because most of them are not tested. Um, uh, thousands of cases are annually um, reported. So since that we could see that graph, 1970 from in DRC um, and some other um, African region like uh, countries like the um, um, Central African Republic, Sudan and all that. Then in, 19, in 2017, after almost 40 years, after which no disease, uh, no reported case of um, impacts had occurred. A suspected case, like I mentioned earlier, occurred in Nigeria. And that's, um, if we look at, if you see, look at this, that, sorry. Yes. So from 19, um, 1970, um, sporadic cases were reported. And this, if, um, we need to know that the, the cases reported in DRC is not included in this um, charts. But from around 2017, there's a sudden increase in the cases that were reported. And that was when the outbreak in Nigeria also started. So this is um, um, 
geographical distribution of uh, MPOS cases in DRC, for instance, and we could see gradual increase um, or, or um, increase in, in the number of cases reported in DRC, and also not only in number, the geographical area um, covered um, where um, the transmission um, is ongoing is also has also been increasing. We could see by um, 2022, we have almost 80, 89% of the provinces in DRC where are reporting DRC compared to um, 20, just 2019 when it was just 73%. So there's been a continuous um, um, transmission of MPOX over time. Yes, so from the first, um, the case reported in Nigeria in 2017, we were able to um, um, have some evidence, uh, evidences that, um, that re, um, concerning the um, MPOX. So before 2017, only three cases of MPOX was rec um, is recorded in the literature in Nigeria. One in 1970, um, 1978 and then um, um, 1972. So just three cases until therefore, about 40 years after we began to report cases of um, Monkeypox, and we're able to see evidence of human to um, human transmission. If you look at the, this, this um, a cluster of cases that were picked in um, um, a correctional facility, you know, and we're able to see evidence of human to human transmission. Most of the cases then were also in men, um, and we were wondering what exactly is responsible for this pattern because it wasn't expected. If you look at um, the situation um, prior to this, uh, Mpox affect more mostly children and these are people that live in forested area by 20, from 2017 the pattern we were seeing was the father was seeing people who are sexually active um high prevalence higher pre um, prevalence of mpox among people living with hiv um continued sporadic um transmission um or um we are also seen so um we are able to um Report this. Um, say this is what we are seeing in Nigeria. There we know um, there are so many unanswered questions, but we were able to report this. It was a good signal to say something perhaps um, is um, going on. So this is about three years into um, surveillance, MPOX surveillance in Nigeria. We could see that from that first case that was you know de detected. From that period, we're able to demonstrate an endemic state in the country. We're able to see that um, more, more males are more affected, and not just um, males, males of um, young adult males, you know, usually between 20 and 40. And so, so those um, were our findings um, as far back as 20. Um, 17. The death rate was about 5.3 at a point um, in 2020. And then we also saw gradual increase in the geographical area um, of, um, covered. Yeah, so you could, if you look at this, this was um, the area um, affected, the states affected in 2017. And compare, uh, uh, then we had perhaps about um, 16, 17 states where cases were reported. And by 2022, where the global outbreak has also um, started, about 34 out of 36 uh, plus one states in Nigeria um, were already reporting impost cases. And part of this are part um, area where uh, the known epidemiology uh, shouldn't have applied, especially in the northern parts um, of Nigeria. So many of these were documented um, in um, peer-reviewed journals. So in non-African countries, so um, from 2018, um, exportation of cases began. Uh, we could see um, sometimes in 2018, exporta uh, exportation of uh, MPOX to the UK. Um, and it was in the media, um, if there was a particular one saying, um, the deadly, deadly African 
uh, African disease is now in the UK. So, you know, so there's a lot of, um, uh, a, a, a lot of, um, um, what was it called? You know, um, stigmatization. Apart from stigmatization, um, people were, there, there was a, a lot of fear and, um, you know, panic among the, the general population about, about, um, monkeypox, uh, mpox now, um, then. But be proud to 2017, the first ex ex export exportation occurred, um, from Ghana. However, Till, uh, until 2020, not a single case of mpox had been recorded in Ghana. Um, however, exported um, rodents from Ghana to the U.S. was said to have been responsible for an outbreak in 20, 2003 in the U.S., um, where over about 47 confirmed cases um, were recorded in, in people that had contact with the affected animal. So from 2018, exportation of cases outside Africa to Israel, Singapore, and by 2022, um, the global outbreak setting. So by May 2022, um, the, the multi-country outbreak um, was reported starting from Europe and then um, spreading rapidly to um, many other countries. Uh, by uh, May this year, we've had 111 countries um, where MPOX have been re um, reported, including African countries that were never reporting um, MPOX before, before the outbreak. Now, so this is the global trend of MPOX um, since um, um, January 2022. And we could see um this epi uh, the the epic of and the very long um uh, the very long tail that we have and this is a good evidence of ongoing community transmission um, of mpox even in non endemic previously um non endemic because now we can say uh, that many of these countries <laughs> uh, do not have are not uh, do not have members of the pop uh, of the population which mpox is persistent. So for we for how long this um detail will be, we're not sure. Um but with all the, the response activities, we hope we um because quite a number of countries have not been reporting for a while. Even though we have, for instance, in recent time, we are seeing that um some um some resurgence in some countries again, especially for instance in the Western uh, Pacific um, region in recent time we've seen in China, in Japan, where um, there's uh, some um, surge in reported cases. So this is just a curve to show us the pattern in different um, regions in Africa. If you look at the Africa, you know, you could, the, the pattern is different and that's, um, you know, still, um, 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 it's a result of the endemic state, um, state sporadic cases being reported. So this is the Western um, Pacific region um, that I mentioned. You could see in the Japan, um, China, in recent time, research in, in, in cases report, being reported. And so we initially started, I mentioned, exportation from Africa. But we know that now exportation is not just from the endemic, previously non-endemic area. We could see um, exportation from all over. Okay. Um, a, a recent case reported in, in Pakistan was had travel history from um, Saudi Arabia and all. so from within region across region uh, we are seeing um, exportation as a result of human uh, movement so what has been done so far regarding all this um, of course response at national regional and global um, and, and uh, levels, the, uh, the response strategy has been to uh, ensure that the multi-country, uh, um, uh, um, the, the outbreak, we were able to control, especially interruption of human-to-human -human, um, transmission of, of uh, monkeypox virus, while we, as much as possible, limit zoonotic transmission. We can limit, um, we know we can't, we can't eradicate, um, and more so, 
very we know so little about the animal reservoir of Mpox till now. A lot of work has been done. Um, we had some animal um, surveillance um, done over about two, three years in Nigeria, and we were unable to identify the virus in the animals um, that were sampled. So we're not really sure what uh, or what the animal reservoir is. Are we dealing with zoonotic, really? Um, we know it's a zoonotic, but all we can see the uh, available evidence um, we, we, that we, co we currently have is more towards the um, human to human. So um, in intervening, we need to ensure we, we, uh, we, we control human to human transmission. And that's this will do surveillance, diag diagnostics, um, invention, prevention and control, insurance, isolation of cases contact tracing and all that, risk communication and community engagement. This has worked really well in the ongoing outbreak because we have the um, population of um, the, the um, gay men who have sex with men, that community. It was, uh, it was kind of help, uh, helpful when you compare with what is happening in, uh, in Africa in the sense that you know this community, it's easier to reach out to them, it's easier to communicate, you know, um, with them and reach out um, uh, and um, give out the, the available, the limited available um, intervention, especially the countermeasure when we talk about the vaccines um, that are made available. So we're, uh, community engagement, ensuring that they have confidence in what the, the, the system is providing um, for them. Then patient management in terms of, usually management is um, more um, on le uh, more or less um, symptomatic management. Um, new products that are developed for smallpox are also being used in the management of um, of monkey uh, mo mpox as well. I still sometimes see monkeypox. <laughs> now, um, a lot of guidance documents have been developed over the past um, one year um, to to support, especially for state that uh, are experiencing this for the first time. So vaccines. So what do we have? I don't know. This vac but uh, vaccination costs. Uh, so the interest around vaccine, um, there, there were no vaccines developed specifically for mpox. However, um, the smallpox um, uh, um, vaccines, especially new generation smallpox vaccines, uh, are being deployed um, for um, mpox. I'll say a little more about that as you move on. Um, in, also for therapeutics, then a lot of research. Um, I can't imagine the number of mpox publications that, that has emerged in the last, um, let's say, seven, eight, um, eight, eight months compared to what we've had previously. Now, um, because of the unusual event, um, the WHO DG declared this event as an um, public health event of international concern. And that just ended um, this past, um, um, this month. And then the, the disease had been um, renamed as a result of the stigmatization that was associated um, with the name, um, the, the name of the disease and the clades being named after people, uh, places. Now, so this just to show quite a number of do, um, technical documents that the, the um, World Health Organization have been able to put together um, for um, in response to this outbreak. Many of them have started before the the, the country uh, multi-country outbreak. However, um, um, with the fake the, um, the declaration, a lot of resources um, were put into this, and a lot of work have been accomplished. So vaccination, smallpox um, um, vaccine, I said about 80% um, effective, um, protective against um, monkeypox. So we have um, diff, um, the new generations of, of um, vaccines that are, are, made, are available. Before the multi-country outbreak as well, um, an ad hoc strategic advisory group was put together to work on smallpox um, vaccines and 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 mpox vaccines and so it was so timely as this the, so, so such that um the the committee were able to to um support the response to the mpox 
um, outbreak in being able to provide um, guide, guidance and um, recommendations. So vaccines have been used low. Unfortunately, as we speak, um, the vaccine is still not available in a demi country where the, 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 the um, disease has been haunted for um, over five decades, unfortunately, as a result of um, access and um, access. Now, so there are quite um, some um, on, uh, um, research questions that still need to be answered um, regarding um, the, the, the vaccines that have been deployed, the, the clinical efficacy, the effectiveness, um, the, who gets it, the administration, one dose, the, um, single dose or double dose, um, the populations to be given, um, you know, the deployment strategy, how do we go about this? Do we want, who are the people to be given? Do you want to give uh, um, mass vaccination? Definitely not rec recommended. So quite a number of questions that are still um, ongoing and still needs um, answers. Now, so the different groups of vaccines, of course, like I mentioned, these are smallpox vaccines, which are also used um, for autopox, um, uh, other autopox um, viruses. So we have the first generation. This is the vaccine that was used in the eradication of smallpox. This is not recommended um, um, for um, for the uh, um, in, for mpox prevention. Um, so, but we know that, I know when the, the, out, the outbreak started, a lot of people were talking about the stockpile, WHO has got stockpile, why are they not deploying it and all that. The vaccines are not recommended for use. And that is the reason why we have the second, third generation to, pro, to be able to have safer um, um, vaccines. So we have second, third, and fourth generation. Currently the third, and the fourth generation of vaccines are the ones that are rec um, rec um, recommended for mpox, um, resp um, for vaccination against mpox. Specifically, three of them have been licensed for use in in in, in, in um, for monkeypox prevention. The NVA um, by Bavarian Nordics LC60. Um, that's a um, a Japanese um, uh, vaccine. Then we have the Autopox VAC, that's the most recent, which has been uh, um, licensed by the Russia, uh, Russia Federation as well. So we have these three um, products, vaccines, that have been licensed for use against mpox. Now, there are other products. Um, these are antivirals that are also under a lot of research um, for um, their um, product for smallpox, but are also being um, um, used for monkeypox um, treatments. But these are currently used um, on, um, under a MURI pro protocol. That means every day to, for, 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 to use it, you have to sign an agreement to ensure you provide data to WHO. Um, so what, who are those that can take this vaccine for now? So we have... Um, Two strategies. So we have the primary uh, or pre-exposure um, preventive vaccination, and it's um, recommended for persons at high risk of exposure. And these are people in the context of the ongoing uh, multi-country outbreak. We have gay, bisexual, and men who have sex with men. Um, then other persons uh, who have uh, multiple casual um, um, sex partners. We have health workers. Um, clinical laboratory personnel, um, and then all the people that might be considered at risk of severe disease in, in case they get impact. So these people can be offered pre-exposure um, vaccine. And then um, many countries adapt this. There are some countries that go beyond this. We're offering to all HIV patients, you know, so I, um, um depending on how much of it you have and how you assess the risk. But this is the WHO recommendation for pre-exposure vaccination. Then the second um, group, um, strategy has to do with post-exposure vaccination, which for persons that have been exposed to um, persons that have been confirmed to have impacts, these are contacts. Um, so they are, they are offered um, 
the vaccine as well as um, to, to protect them from developing um, disease. So this is the second category. And saying again that mass vaccination is not recommended, irrespective of if you got um, access to the vaccines of you, ha you have uh, supply or not. Now, so how do countries get these vaccines? Because they are very limited. Um, they are the, the, the either direct procurement, they are limited, um, availability is limited and it's quite expensive. Um, so how do countries get this? Of course, high income countries during this outbreak were able to put resources together to purchase directly. So direct procurement from the manufacturer. Um, the, uh, the unfortunate thing again is the fact that manufacturers, um, sometimes may want to sell, um, may not want to sell in small quantity to, um, to some, to, to, to people that need them. So they would rather want to sell in large quantity, you know, um, so, so either. So some in the, some regions pull resources together to to buy and then share within to countries within their region. So we call this the pool um, procurement bilateral donations. So we see um, countries, high income country, wanting to donate to um, other countries. So there could be bilateral donation um, between countries. As at now, these vaccines have not been pre-qualified by WHO. So WHO is unable um, to stock uh, these vaccines for import um, response. So it's within national authority um, jurisdiction to decide to use this. Your um, regulatory um, bodies are, are able to license and then to use. WHO um, provides guidance and recommendation on use and also in monitoring. Yeah. So doc, um, pro, um, donation to third party, for instance, um, uh, uh, procurement and the WHO can help to make this available to um, other countries or, or, or group that needs it. So what are the challenges um, about uh, MPOX control? Like I've said, the epidemiology is still not well understood, especially in the African region. I remember that at a point um, before the multi-country outbreak, we want to have, okay, if you've got the access to vaccines, um, who are the group that will be vaccinated? So um, we might be able to identify the most at-risk group. Um, it's, it's also a challenge because you need a lot of data to be able um, to do this. You, when you have sporadic cases, unable to identify source of infection and all that. So a lot needs to be understood um, regarding the epidemiology of MPOX. So there's still no, um, there's no established surveillance uh, in most countries. So when this started, everybody's have to learn from scratch. And that was what happened in Nigeria, for instance, in 2017. We started from the scratch, build a surveillance system, develop that guide uh, guidelines and all that. And that is what many other countries are currently um, doing, being a, um, a, 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 a new um, or emerging um, disease. Now, so lack of access to countermeasure, I mentioned this, uh, um, cost availability policy. You know, if you bring in... Um, this vaccine, if you have access to it, you still have to go through regulatory process in each, every country where you're taking it to and all that. Then low awareness uh, and knowledge by healthcare workers. So many people perhaps have gone through medical school for instance training without learning about monkeypox. They see it a lot, are misdiagnosed as chickenpox and all that. So this, it will take a while for people um, 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 and a lot of efforts, which is currently ongoing, to get um, people, uh, healthcare workers, to be able to, to be um, have um, high in index of suspicion uh, and, um, and and get involved in, in surveillance and management of these um, cases. The stigmatization has been a problem, and that was what one led to the, to um, renaming. Um, there are patients that may not, you know. Say whether um, say to their colleagues they've got it, you know. And sometimes um, I didn't have time to go into the clinical presentation um, of this. Uh, you know, sometimes it might present as a single, a solitary lesion. You know, so with with with, with that, so stigmatization um, 
of, of, of affected population of individuals, if you have severe disease, it could, the, the, the look and all, um, all that, you know, make um, stigmatization. Um, even health care workers, we've had a lot of um, patients, you know, that were turned back and were stigmatized during when they're on admission. You know, some of them have to you know, leave the health facility without, in, without getting managed um, as they should. And you know what that means? They leave and then this, the, the transmission continues if they are not managed appropriately and, um, and, and, and allowed to have medical isol um, isolation as appropriate. Now, inconclusive evidence are on um, efficacy and um, of vaccines and therapeutics. So, um, it, it, um, a lot still needs to be done. Like I said, we in recent time we've had um, breakthrough infections among population that have been vaccinated. You know, and that does not mean the vaccine is not um, effective. Um, we, like I mentioned. Um, we do not have full understanding of the reservoir. So managing animal um, to human um, transmission is a bit challenging if you do not know the animals um, to target and how to give your appropriate um, risk communication. So high risk group in Africa, I mentioned, I, we still don't know them. So these are all areas for research that um, has to be still go into Mpox. Then in, 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 um, effective con um, inf infection control strategies are all tied to these factors. You need to know um, the mode of transmission. You need to know um, the high risk group and all that so that you can de design your control strategy um, appropriately. So a lot needs to be learned. So the, what is the summary of all I've said so far? We're saying that Mpox is not new. It's been, it's been in transmission in, in, in places for over five decades. Um, and it's no longer a regional problem. We could see it is a global problem. And it's a, cha it's a, a challenge for researchers, for public health experts, political leaders, especially in Africa, I say, because we need... Um, a, a, a system in which we are able to arise, you know, to the challenge of diseases in this region, ensure we have adequate research in place to be able to give cost-effective solution to the um, um, diseases that is affecting um, the region. Then Mpox uh, maybe occupy the, 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 the niche previously occupied by smallpox. So we need to also see that and ensure the earlier we get it control, the better, you know. Um, the empowerment of researchers to be able to carry out cost-effective solution um, is very important. So now from the um, emergency committee, the last recommendation, um, elimination of human-to-human -human transmission is the way to go. This has been adopted by the, um, the, um, the, UK, the United Kingdom and also the European region. Um, they are how to ensure the eliminate human to human transmission of impacts. And how are we going to do that? Of course, we will need a combination of countermeasures, vaccines, um, effective vaccines, and ensuring we do adequate surveillance and management of um, of patients, collaborative e efforts to improve vaccine access. If we don't control it from source, uh, we, you know, we may have to do what happened in 2022 again and again. We shouldn't wait to control when it gets to the high income country. Why not put the uh, effort together and ensure we have access to countermeasures, to therapeutics where um, they are needed, okay, not to wait and then have access and buy off. In fact, some African countries, when they wanted to buy vaccines, you know, they couldn't even, they didn't have access to it. They couldn't buy even with money. Um, so there's a need to sustain the um, MPOC surveillance, which is been ongoing the last one year, because from this, from the, the, the chart we saw, there's still ongoing um, transmission within the community. Yes, so elimination um, of human to human trans, um, transmission of MPOX is the ultimate goal of the monkeypox response and interventions. This is, this will be made possible by strategic combination of, the, of all measures and the use of um, vaccination, uh, 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 vaccinations. And it is going to be justice for the global smallpox eradication effort. If we have been able to achieve eradication of smallpox with smallpox vaccine and then Mpox um, doing same um, with uh, um, Mpox should be possible, especially with human 
to human transmission of mpox. Yes. So thank you so much. I want to acknowledge um, all those that we work together, oh, um, monkeypox, and those that have contributed a lot to my work on, on mpox. Um, I listed um, some of them, my colleagues, um, going on investigation at the emergency operations center at different times. Thank you so much. Okay. Because there may be questions here that people have. So, okay, we'll start here. Thank you very much for an excellent talk. I'm from DR Congo, so I'm very interested <laughs> by, by this presentation. And I have a question regarding the animal reservoir. The fact that it has been endemic in the DR Congo for so long, and uh, the region or the, lo the, lo the localization in, in the Congo where those cases have been detected, have there been more animal studies in the DR Congo and compare to the maybe animal studies in Nigeria to see if there's any common uh, animals or in order to identify or to have a hypothesis on which animal reservoir could it be? Thank yes, you. so definitely more studies have been done in, G in GRC than in Nigeria. Um, I think we've had just one animal study which happened between 19, um, 2018 and, and, um, and 2020. Um, there, are, there have been a lot. There's, so, there's a ch technical challenge with animal studies because some of their currently available diagnostic um, uh, diagnostics are not quite um, effective when it comes to um, animal samples. Serology, which is important because, for instance, the fact that you pick an animal which isn't sick, it might be difficult. Even if the virus is spread, it might be difficult to detect. So this is a challenge, a lot of work is ongoing to be able to overcome it. But for now, um, very limited um, findings when it comes to animal, an, animal, animal studies. Serological studies, you know, for instance, in the study in Nigeria, um, maybe about two animals were found to test positive by serology. However, if that is for autopox generally. It didn't say mpox. So, um, but for DRC, I must say, since you're from DRC, let me say, this is a big challenge in the sense that the surveillance isn't um, good enough. Most of the cases detected are, are, are not tested. So we have a large number of suspected cases that are reported. There's a need to do more. And, and when cases are, are, are detected, nothing much is, they are not isolated. So they go back into the community. So, so you can expect transmission to continue. Um, I know that it, um, quite a number of effort is also go ongoing to support um, the surveillance and response in DRC. Raul, and then we'll start to... Um... I think one of my questions was uh, taken by... Uh, okay. So I'm from DRC. Oh. So um, as uh, you say that uh, DRC is one of the ecological niche for uh, monkey and pox. So I, I, I'm wondering if there is any uh, global mobilization about this to ensure that not only the surveillance is sustained, but uh, the surveillance should be strengthened. Because as you say, there are many cases detected, but any evidence of lab uh, result. So is there any plan uh, instead of waiting, as we saw for Ebola, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Ebola virus was interesting uh, after fifth, the fifth uh, uh, out, uh, DRC outbreak, and then they start to start to, to work about uh, the the Zebov vaccine. So, is there any? Is it the time to 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 be because as we are seeing that the, the, the DRC is uh, like an, an endemic country, many regions are those cases, is there any global plan to address this situation in terms of surveillance, in terms of response, in terms of vaccination as well? Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, so um, perhaps I'm as passionate uh, as you are regarding TRC, because one, in the global um, outbreak, most persons affected are adults. In TRC, we have a large population of children affected. Um, 
surveillance is poor. Um, let me just say there's a need to do more. And I'm aware um, that there, there are ongoing efforts to see how this can be better supported. But, you know, the, 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 the common thing is to say, oh, um, a lot of prior, um, priority. Maybe there, when you have Ebola outbreak, you have um, some other similarly more um, more severe disease, um, disease or, or public health um, event, perhaps MPOX hasn't been prioritized as it should be. Uh, but the, for instance, the WHO country office um, and regional office are there to support the country to ensure improvement in surveillance and because that was the essence of the um, of the fake that was dis, um, that was declared to ensure all this were uh, 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 strengthened there have been a lot of improvements before what happened before the fake declaration but like we said more needs um, to be done perhaps we can discuss after this yeah um. your Pamela from Cameroon and were also greatly affected by monkeypox so my question is, um, can you be asymptomatic and transmit monkeypox? And this is also kind of linked to um, maybe your possible reasons why it, the monkeypox, the, sorry, mpox spread so rapidly in Nigeria. Because we see that it started um, in some particular areas. And before we knew it, it spread so rapidly. And what exactly was the dynamic behind this? And... I also want to ask about treatment centers. Are there treatment centers in Nigeria and maybe in other very um, countries, endemic countries or countries that are having epidemics in Africa? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Let me start from the last one, treatment center. So MPOX is an infectious disease. Um, so definitely they are, it should be managed um, in isolated um, center. However, Management, um, home management is allowed in the, um, for mild cases on the, provided the patient is able to, to isolate throughout the period of, um, of the illness until all the, the rash, um, has healed and crossed out. So in Nigeria, yes, treatment center, in some facilities. So what, what I generally say is if you have a secondary or tertiary facility, they should definitely have an infectious disease ward. One, two, three beds, whatever, you know, but having centers dedicated to MPOX, no. It is expected that, um, infectious diseases are managed in isolated ward. Um, so this is what happened at the beginning of the of the outbreak. We saw um, some health facilities uh, in some states. Some facilities were dedicated to manage these cases in hospital in, in places where they have um, infectious disease hospitals. Separately, they go there for management. Um, however, this can be managed in secondary facilities. Um, however, they will need to have. A, 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 an isolation ward where they can um, isolate this patient from other um, from other cases. Now, um, how did it spread so fast? Well, is is this is the question that we are all trying um, to. We don't know fully because, I, like we said, um, we, do, we we're not even sure of the risk factor, why the resurgence in 2017, for instance. And since that time, it has, um, there's been sustained um, transmission. Of course, one, we believe before that time that some cases were missed, but we, but we also know that there's a change from that time because the number of cases that have been seen um, subsequently shows this, you know, a, re a, a true resurgence or during that period. But we know that we are having human-to-human -human transmission and not just zoonotic events, sporadic zoonotic event. And that is what perhaps can explain what we currently have. When you have human-to-human -human transmission, you are likely going to have um, a more um, rapid spread than when you have just zoonotic transmission, which could be um, um, sporadic. Um, asymptomatic infection, yes. Um, there have been um, confirmation. 
people that are asymptomatic. But we also need to know sometimes when we say asymptomatic, someone with a mild um, disease might present as asymptomatic sometimes. Um, but it's been that we, we've had. Um, that, that, that have been um, articles that have been published about asymptomatic people that were tested um, randomly and, uh, and tested um, posit um, positive. However, what is not established is if asymptomatic um, cases can, uh, can infect other people. There is no evidence that um, asymptomatic uh, persons can't um, um, transmit to others for now. Yeah, but a lot uh, still needs to be understood. Thank you so much. Um, given that the the um, epidemiology seems to include children in DRC, yeah. um, my first question is, are there any efforts to test vaccines in child populations? And the second one to that is, is there any um, interest or anticipation that uh, sort of broader control of disease in children in DRC would be able to reduce global transmission if if the the cases were just tamped down, generally speaking, in that region through routine vaccination, for example. Yeah. So thanks. Um, so far, um, the the clade that is um, in transmission in DRC is clade one, and we haven't seen that being exported like the clade two in the way found in the West African region. Why? Not so sure, but one um, reason you can give is perhaps most many of the places affected in in GRC are rural communities, um, children, and all that. When the outbreak occurred in Nigeria, the clay to that occurred in Nigeria, for instance, with one of the things we found was rather than in rural community, we are seeing people in urban settings, you know being affected. Um, so perhaps that contributed to the spread. So for DRC, it's really it's spread a lot of cases in DRC, um, but we are not seeing um, exploitation. For vaccine in children, no. Um, so far, um, we've seen um, clinical trial. In fact, clinical trials been on in DRC for about, about seven years, but this is only in um, health workers, actually. Yes, it's in, in healthcare. Okay, but we need to move from there, from clinical trials to seeing the vaccine being used actually to protect people. You know, and when it is when that happens that we that we see um, vac children being vaccinated. Yes, so I, be, I believe uh, bilateral donations um, might get um, might be able to um, get some vaccines um, for use for that purpose soon. We'll get two more questions, Shamed. I, I was just going to share, so thank you very much for your experience and your frontline experience is so useful to us. You should have talked to us before the outbreak. Um, but I just wanted to share some of our experiences in the UK and then I had a question for you. I'm a pediatrician, so I'm very pediatric focused. But coming back to a few things, we did try and isolate the first few cases really, really, really hard. Yeah. And then we gave up uh, because it just wasn't possible. So our recommendation was stay at home keep away from people. But if you can't stay away from your family, you can't. And if you're going to go out, make sure you don't have physical contact. It became very clear in this outbreak, which was SM MSM related, with this clade, the transmission was almost all of it was sexually transmitted. Mm -hmm. So it did mean physical sexual contact and probably sexual transmission, but clearly there would be a component of close contact that came with it as well. And um, there are studies done, so it's not just asymptomatic transmission, there's also the pre-symptomatic phase. And yeah. there are modeling studies, I think if I'm right, it's about 30 or 40% of the transmissions occurred before they became symptomatic themselves. So you can do modeling work to try and predict how much uh, you can transmit before you even know you have it. The bigger problem is there were all these adults out there who had very mild symptoms and rashes they didn't understand. Mm -hmm where um, they were around. So, I mean, as a pediatrician, we had schools where teachers had these rashes and going to school. And it took between two and four weeks before, before somebody thought, oh, this is monkeypox. So there's a lot of people out there who have very mild rash, especially in the genital areas where they wouldn't really think of monkeypox in general, yeah. who were roaming around, who had the infection, who didn't know, who were clearly transmitting from open wounds. In terms of children, we had 
we did a lot of work on children because of concerns coming from Africa about the high risk in children and a few case reports from the United States. And that created a sense of panic that was probably unwarranted for young children and infants because we were told that they were at very high risk. Now, reports were coming out from places like Spain of two types of transmissions in children. The very young ones were the toddlers who actually got monkeypox when they were being cuddled by their parents who had the rash, and the teenagers who were getting it from sexual transmission and an outbreak in tattoo parlors, which is an unusual thing. Uh, but what we did is we went in and we isolated children and COVID threw us into a panic. So we started going into COVID mode and sending them home. We offered vaccination with the MVABN to our children as well, even though it had never been tested in children. One of the reasons to do it was there are no data. And if we didn't use it, we'll never be able to use it. Mm -hmm. So we did give it to the children. We offered it to them and said, it's never been tested in children. It works in adults as far as we can tell. If you want it, it's there. And these are to the children who were exposed to a case. And we vaccinated about 100 children. We got uh, reactogenicity data from about 50 children, and there was no problems at all in using it. And a few of them gave us a blood sample, and it shows that they make really good responses after a single dose. So what we're seeing in adults should easily be seen in children. The problem was we didn't get a single case in a child, despite all the media, despite all the contacts, school contacts, household contacts. The children in the UK did not get. We had one baby exactly. who got it from the mother, and that was it. Yeah. So my question to you is, even when you look at the literature, and we have, and we keep looking at it every three months, we can't find very sick children with monkeypox. Right. So this idea that monkeypox is severe in Africa, is it because you are just target, you're identifying the tip of the iceberg, and for every one of those, there's probably a hundred who completely don't have the disease? Because our public health, our public health interventions was disproportionate to the risks that they were feeling at the time. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, thanks for, for, for the, um, comments. I was also keenly following the, 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 the UK, um, response. So if you see this, this is a child, um, 20, at uh, 28 days, um, who got infected from the mom, the mom. So this, we're not quite sure if this child had, um, the transmission during birth or or after we're not sure because we lost the mom and eventually the child actually as well we have mpox in children i tell you another case that i investigated in a child that child was picked at day two of life um with the child survived but the rash were very um, you could see CV. when it comes to number, the size of the, of the rash, very severe. So we've, we've, we've had cases in children. Um, that's uh, one of, of our articles, um, recently reviewing, um, mpox in children, uh, mpox and HIV. Um, we, we, we found because a retrospective study in which we tested all, um, available, uh, um, cases, um, samples we have. For HIV, and we found uh, um, that apart from in adults, HIV was an issue. But we we also found that mortality, because we tried to relate it to mortality, we found that the mortality among children almost fifty percent. The number of um, children that that uh, with mpox is quite. I doubt if we had up to 20 so far, um, not from 2020, um, but the mortality is definitely higher in children um, with or without HIV infection. So I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure, but like I said, because of the, um, the, num the, the, the data we have, we keep learning. We can't say anything absolutely, um, but definitely from the data we have from Nigeria, we are seeing um, a high risk of that. In children, and same for 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 DRC, the mortality in children in DRC as well is higher than what obtains um, in in adults. So um, I'm not sure if I answered um, all your questions. So thank you. Thank you. So 